Hi there and welcome to the NS3 video guide. First of all, it was really a great response from your side and really it helped me a lot in motivation and creating these videos. So let's get started and before we move on to the this is actually a second.cc file. So before we move ahead, you should be aware that what kind of file I'm using and what I'm explaining. So I hope by now you can open up the second.cc file quite easily. And here's the simple code. I have opened it up in the G edit and it's inside the examples, inside the tutorials folder. There are a couple of them, like there is a second.cc, third.cc and quite a lot of them. We are going to discuss about the second.cc file. So I have opened up in the G edit and you can see quite an overwhelming code is out there. Quite scary one also, but believe me, it's the simplest possible code anyone could have write. Now, before you move on into this video, I would recommend you to please go ahead and watch my previous video, which is explaining the first.cc file, because that was actually the basic concept behind this file or even other files as well. If you understand that pretty much good, that would be really, really great and awesome in writing other codes, understanding the codes, what is going and what is happening behind the scene. Now, before I explain what is happening in the second.cc file, let me move back to my browser. Here is my website. You can join me up at the Facebook also with this small beautiful button in the blue. Now what I wanted to show you is this uh, SlideShare uh, website and our other colleague Mr. Raul Hada, our sir has posted out quite a number of presentations out here. What I want to show you here is the presentation. Here is the link. Now the presentation, it's having the third slide, which will give you a brief idea what I was trying to explain in the first movie. So what does it say? It's simply something like try to grab it like something. You want to build up a simple computer. It's something like that. So what is happening? First, we create a node means you just purchase a computer. After that, you attach some NAT devices and channel on it. Now, NAT devices are simply just like you install an ether device or wireless device antenna or something like that. Now you specify what channel it is going to work on. If it is a CSMA channel, it is going to be a point to point channel, wireless channel and a tons of others that you want to have. Now, according to that, you have to set the attributes on it. Now, what is the frame rate, data rate and couple of other things as well. And you have to define the channel as well, as well the properties of the channel. Now, once the second step is being complete, the third step is to install internet protocols on it. Now you have to say that these devices should follow a particular protocols that you are interested or that you want to change out. So that's an important step as well. After that, you assign the base IP address. Of course, in order to communicate over the internet or over any kind of network, IP address is a base. Now it's, it is up to you what you want to do with that IP address. It can be IPv version 4, version 6 or maybe who knows you want to create some other as well because that's the research part for all the PhD guys out there. And after that we install the application. Now the by the term application here means you simply want to put an application over it like FTP or maybe a client server application or could be anything out there. So make sure that you follow up this chart. This is really a beautiful piece to understand what is actually happening behind the scene. Now, whenever you are going to create any kind of topology, network, anything out there, this is going to be the base of pretty much everything. So I hope you have grabbed it so far. Now, one more interesting thing. I hope many of you have already understood and known about my website, newdemy.com. Of course, the name is not a great choice, but it's, it is pretty good and catchy as well. So, you know, and nowadays it's hard to find the domain name. So you can join in into the NS3 course or pretty much other courses, which are also out there. So I'll move to my Ubuntu machine, which is a VMware. And let's try to understand what is happening at the second.cc. Now, once you have grabbed that particular logic from the flowchart, it is simply easy to understand this. Now, from here, these are simply the header files. No need to be worry about that. If you're using something like Eclipse, it can Im import all the files for you. Now, here is the topology, what we are going to understand. First, there is a node N0 and N1. Now these nodes are communicating using a point to point channel and they are having a base address of 10.1.1.0 and 
n1 to n4 is actually a LAN that is having a base address of 10.1.2.0. Now, so both are having a different channel and this is actually a CSMA and this is a point to point protocol. Now let's come back uh, a below it and let's move on to the main example here. I hope log component is not at all a problem for you by now. I have already explained that. Now here are a few things that might get you into the trouble, but these are simply piece. Now if you have been creating any kind of code, this is actually the code reusability example. Now here we are setting the boolean value which is verbose. You want to see what is happening. Verbose is kind of a thing which allows you to picturize, picturize what is actually happening. A step by step logs and displays being made. So you can set it true or false, but I would recommend to let, let it be true because it shows you a lot of details. Now here is NCSMA that is simply a variable that is unsigned integer of 32 bit and is having a value of 3. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So we are having uh, 4 nodes of NCSMA. Now this is a code reusability. When you want to make let's say uh, 30 nodes you can simply make the change here as 30 and the entire code will going to be is going to be work same. So that's a code reusability. After that, there is simply a, a log devices, command line, a CMD. You can take the input of verbose and NCSMA with the command line option or you can simply say at the runtime. So that's also pretty simple to do. And then there is if condition out here. That's a pretty interesting and quite, a, you can say, tricky code. Now here it says if verbose is on, that means you have to enable the logs. And there is also one more intelligent condition that says if NCSMA is equals to zero, then automatically put it into the one. Now, why is that? Because if you want to make no CSMA nodes, why are actually why actually you are writing a code? So that's a pretty tricky part. So if you don't want any CSMA channel, why are you making so much of trouble? So set the NCSMA channel to at least one. After that, Let's follow up what are hap what is happening out here. First of all, we are creating a node container. So we are creating a P2P nodes, create two nodes, P2P nodes. And out of that, what we are doing here is uh, we are creating a node container with a CSMA node. So we have done with the P2P nodes. Now we are creating the CSMA nodes. The CSMA node is being created. And you can see here we have told that create two nodes, but here we are telling it create NCSMA. Now this NCSMA is actually the same as that you have seen here. So that means we are using the code reusability and making the code uh, much more independent of each other. So that whenever we want to make a change, we can simply make a change. After that, we are creating a point to point uh, device here. So we are setting the device attributes here. You can simply say, and you might have guessed it right after point to point uh, device what we need to do we simply need to install that device onto our node that's how it works if you remember from the presentation so what we are doing uh, the p2p device is now being put on to the install this is the method how you do it dot install and we are installing this device onto the nodes again the next thing is going to be again the same but for the csma now we are having a csma helper we are creating a csma from it and we are having a channel attribute in this case. So once the device is being created, the channel is being, uh, we need to pass on. These are simply the channel attributes and channel properties. After that, we are having a CSMA device. We are going to install the CSMA device on it. And after that, we are going to install the internet protocols over it. So this line from here to here is pretty simple. We are installing stack.install, stack.install for P2P nodes and for CSMA nodes. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Okay, let's move ahead. Now what we need to do, if you remember from the presentation, what you need to do is the set the base IP address here. So what we are doing, we are using IPv4 address helper. We are creating address from it. And just assume this as simply a class and you are creating a variable or simply an object from the class. That would be pretty easy to understand. And then we are you, uh, assigning a base IP address, which is going to be this one. If you want to put up uh, the IPv6, then simply create an IPv6 address helper and 
check out what are the attributes that it takes and simply pass on the attributes uh, as IPv6 IP address. That's a pretty simple one. After that, we are setting the IPv address for CSMA interface. In this case, it was IP2P interface. Now it is CSMA interface. Okay, so far so good. So we are moving step by step into the down and finally we are on to the last phase that is install applications on the nodes. So what application do we want? In this case, it's simply a client server. So it is a server app being installed here that we are installing the CSMA nodes and it's simply a simple example out here. Now let's move ahead. Now here we are having an eco client also. So this client is also getting installed on CSMA and make sure that you also remember this port. I have already explained what this nine is. You can change it also. It's simply a port address out here. And then we have got a client here and you can see the server actually starts at one second and it stops at 10 seconds while the client starts at two seconds and the client stops at 10 seconds. And then we have got uh, enable pcap all and all that CSMA file. Now pcap is actually a packet file from which you can read with the Wireshark or dozens of other tools. Of course, I'm not going to be talking about the pcap. I have talked quite a lot about the pcap files and Wireshark in my security courses. So I'm not going to do that again here. And you can simply see at the end, we have got a simulation run and simulation destroy. Pretty exhausting, yes it was, but it's pretty simple. It's not that tough and it is pretty easy. Uh, the only thing that you need to be worried about is what you are doing. Now you can expand this simple example into let's say uh, 20 nodes of CSMA. Of course you cannot do 20 nodes of point to point. That is not a point to point. Point to point simply means one node getting connected to another node. That's the point to point. But in the CSMA, you can make a LAN up to let's say 20 or 100, wherever you want to expand. Now one thing you can easily do with this is simply to change the things like uh, data rates and this one. Let me just show you what you can do. Uh, here it is. So channel attributes and device attribute. Try to play around with this, like uh, take a note of what happens when you change it to 5 Mbps to 50 Mbps or let's say 100 Mbps to 5 Mbps. Uh, does that make a significant difference in the connections and all of that? That would be a pretty good example to work out with. So I hope it was a pretty exhausting for you and I am expecting that you will comment down and reach me out with your research. It's always a good to know that what you're working with and to have few words with you.